everybody is heat override, and I'm ready to bring the pain for you. And Dr. Roto this week. Man, has it been another crazy week. We're every week five. We're ready to bring the pain to the competition, no matter the slate, seasonal. And of course, if you haven't caught my IDP articles yet, get over to drroto.com. If you're watching this on any of the streaming platforms, or if you're listening to this in a podcast audio form, wherever you're listening at, Get to drrodo.com and check out all the content hitting the site. Doc just dropped his Roto Visionaries. You know you have to see those before you play DFS on either Fan Duel or DraftKings. So let's get to it. Let's bring the pain. How excited are you? I'm not excited because today is a giant loss to the Commanders. Oh, yeah. Man, the NFC East is a joke other than the Eagles, which, you know, Horns up, Ram Nation, let's go. We ain't playing no games. People are counting the Rams out. Rams can beat the Eagles. Probably won't, but we'll see. You know, but I got to get my gotta get my plays in. That game could get high scoring. And that, that's what we want, right? I mean, that's, that's the Eagle. And so funny thing is, is one of my friends who's an Eagles fan, me and him got a matchup this week. Well, last night he had DJ Moore. And apparently he's got... I'm on Raw St. Brown. Sometimes you got to sign a little blood away. Ooh, yeah. I know y'all was waiting for that. <laughs> let's get to it. Let's, let's start with Monday night, the, the giant part of my title, and the Giants pathetically losing to the Seahawks. I mean, this game, it just it sucked. It sucked for any kind of DFS terms if you were hoping that you needed a big game from anybody in this game you're wrong i had walker and i had jones and i was down by like 20 points i lost by three points like come on man easily any week walker gets me 18 to 20 so you know sometimes man things in leagues and the way things work out they just don't work out but nothing's working out for the giants and everybody is running to the waiver wire to get Wondell Robinson. He's the hot new toy. Um, No, he's not. What's funny is, is all the same people running to get him forgot that Josh Reynolds is out there and that maybe Khalif Raymond is out there and that those two might be getting some extra targets this week since Brown is going to be sitting. And that is why you just don't overhype. Like, Man, there's probably people that almost blew half a budget on Wandale Robinson. Like, why would you? The only player on that team, when he comes back, is Barkley and Waller. And this isn't going to make this team any better. Like, you can see the play calling sucks. Daniel Jones is out there making bad decisions, except when he wants to break the slate a few weeks ago and destroy all my late teams that were winning all this money. And then this dude comes in and takes over the slate. Like, dude, we don't care about your one week being better than the last four weeks, bro. Like, we don't care anymore, man. Like, you make bad decisions. You came from Duke, man. Get up. You got to have a brain on that head. What is wrong with you, bro? You have all this talent. And those receivers, the wide receivers for the Giants cannot get open. Look, they have no skill to get open so we're back everybody thought that Darren Waller was going to be a great addition to this team he's not because he's out there getting screwed and then he's also dropping balls like we knew he would do that but no no here we are looking at these same fools blending out their plan and then all these other cats is rolling up on the waiver wire paying up for the Giants offense look I'm already out the season is almost a third of the season over I mean, I have a, I have multiple three and one teams. I had, I had some really close losses last week, and it sucked. And it came down to that Monday night game and some injuries. But that's what all we're in. We're in, and then I go to the waiver wire, like most people, and it's just junk there. I mean, yeah, there's good players for other teams because I have the best players on my team. That's just what happens. But not all the times they don't like to. They like to take some games off. But with all these teams going on, man. You got to make a move. It doesn't matter that a fantasy season has 14 games now, but four games out of the way, you got 10 games. If you're one and three or you're three and one, 
you still could lose three, four more games and you could miss the playoff. These next seven, and so these next games are crucial. You need to make sure that you're on it. And rostering Giants is not going to be the answer unless it's IDP. Oh, yeah, like you can go roster their IDP players because they might get out there and make some tackles if the blown coverage or the play isn't already over scoring a touchdown because that's all that seems to be happening. Team like Seattle didn't even really play this game. Everybody got ho-hum stats because it required a ho-hum effort from the Seahawks to beat the Giants. That's sad. Somebody asked, what's the worst team in the league to watch? It's the Giants. I don't care if Barkley comes back. What are they going to do? Run up the same bashed lines? Man, get out of here. Let's move on to the next game. Man, the Commanders got trashed. Trashed by Chicago. And the one team I was talking about just a few seconds ago, they were like, what team is worse to watch, the Giants or the Bears? The Bears. Because the Bears actually try. They have a quarterback that doesn't sit there as like the most quieted version of Eli Manning ever, Daniel Jones. And you can you you have Justin Fields. He said, yo, my coaches suck. He said that. Like, yeah, of course, he released a sentence, but he practically said they suck. And so they let him do what he wants, and they just let him chuck it to DJ Moore the whole game, and the commanders were just straight pointless. Their entire defensive line, they they were just in there. They got pressure. They got sacked. On the first DJ Moore touchdown, that was was holding. That was holding. I don't care what you say, but hey, it's it's a touchdown, whatever. Happened to be playing against them, and that's fine. You can take your... 52 points up on me. I'll come back. Yeah, it's what we do. So when you look at it and you see all these players, just you know, just DJ Moore going off. And it was like every time, like they were handed to Khalil Herbert and he was looking like Jonathan Taylor running through lanes. Of course, when Jonathan Taylor played football, which might be this week. Yay! Welcome back, JT. Anyway. Let's get to yeah, you need you need to go help that team because I mean people are falling in love with Zach Moss and I don't know what they are drinking. They might need to switch from tea to coffee because and I know a good coffee place. If you go to Nagas Charm Coffees, you can get some great roasted coffees at a price from a local dude that likes to do kung fu with me. Oh yeah, let's go back to it. Man, I got nothing, man. Thomas was boss. I was so mad because I had I was so busy yesterday and I pulled Thomas off of my lineup, one of my DFS lineups that I really, you know, just wanted to go in on. I paid the price. Thomas was definitely cheap. Middle of the road guy could have got the job done for me. He did not because he was not rostered, unfortunately. But that's fine. That's fine. I'll just go roster the rest. In that same league, nobody really rostered Thomas and nobody really rostered. Nobody rostered DJ Moore. So I'm safe. <laughs> yeah so let's get to it man chicago just looked good man they they got rid of they traded chase claypool today that's fine you know dj moore is definitely looking good in there you know they did get the running game going a little bit the defense man it just shows why tj edwards and tremaine edmonds are just good and brisker's back there getting hurt coming back in making plays the bears look good and i gotta say for that fc east both they got you had two teams got punked within a few days of each other. I mean, that's why the Eagles got it easy. So let's hope the Rams beat them. Let's get to it. I know y'all been waiting, and it's time for the Macho Pick of the Week. Uh huh. Yeah, you know you like the Macho Pick, especially when they cash every single week and they get touchdowns every single week, like they've been doing. And last week's James Cook came up. They didn't, I thought they would definitely get, you know, use him. I got so scared. I had a nice parlay and James Cook was at 24 yards and I needed 25. And I was like, come on, man. And he came in, he got that run to get him up to 29. I think it was. And man, did we cash. And that's not, for some reason, it just seemed like lat train was getting all that work. But in the end, Cook did provide, he got passes. He, I mean, he had that huge catch, which was just awesome. And then, of course, the touchdown. So that saves it, man. The macho picks of the week have been hot. 
Like everything else, man, we're, we're hitting touchdowns now. My IDP articles are getting the sacks props, man. Right now, 15 and one off my IDP articles alone in just those tackles, man. I, 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 I don't know numbers, but I know if you keep betting those numbers, you're going to win. Like I want you to. You're going to be our rich friend, like Doc would say. So everybody, have a great day. Make sure your lineups are set and don't pick up any giants like just let them sit there let everybody drink that poison bottle from formelda i don't even care that's what we're doing oh yeah bring the pain to your competition this week now get ready for the ultra contrarian show oh yeah may the points be with you